Big news. With the 17th pick of the 2020 MLB draft, the Boston Red Sox select Nicholas York, a second baseman from Archbishop Mitty High School, San Jose, California. The Arizona Diamondbacks have the next pick. This is a surprise, folks. Um, Nicholas York ranked 139 by MLB.com, number 96 by Baseball America. He's just been drafted 17th overall. Uh, he's committed to play college ball at Arizona. Some scouts have him as the best pure hitter among prepsters on the West Coast. Solid hit tool. Um, there's pop there. May wind up at second base or, or even third base. Um, wow. <laughs> wow. Hey, you got to look at, first of all, congratulations to this kid. It's amazing. The Red Sox, you see him pull Red that Red Sox ball don't down. have a second round pick, too. Yeah. So you, yeah, because of the penalties they're going through, this is a, a big pick for them. You're right. They don't have a second round pick because of the punishment handed down by Major League Baseball. All right, Jonathan Mayo, we need your help here. Uh, Nicholas York, make sense of it. Yeah. Yeah, I can make some sense of it. You know, area scouts I talked to about York didn't think he was signable, that he was going to go on a, to Arizona, but they really like the hit tool. It's an, it's an advanced approach to the plate. I think there's power there. Uh, you know, uh, breaking down the skills a, a little bit. It's all offensive. He's had some shoulder problems. He's got anchors in his shoulder, so he's probably a second baseman. I don't see him making the throws from third unless he can really strengthen that shoulder. So it's an offensive-minded second baseman skill set. You know, I, I don't know, guys, with the lack of a second pick, it's a small bonus pool for the Red Sox. Uh, maybe there's someone in the third round they can be aggressive with, but, uh, you know, Nick York was the kind of guy that most guys in his area in Northern California thought was going to go on to play for the Wildcats. Wow. Yeah, Greg and H, this, you know, going into this draft, I'm wondering if one club, because of the lack of information, uh, Heim's just taken over, you know, the job in Boston. They've dealt with a lot. Would one club take a player with the intention of maybe not even signing the player to put them, because they get the pick again next year Whoa. when they'll be well more prepared to be able to execute Whoa, a so strategy? They, they, they won't. Well, Jonathan just made a point um, that I wasn't aware of, but that when he bought up a tough sign, you know, that information comes out on every kid. That's a difficult sign. And some of them won't get taken. But if I'm running a team and I'm not necessarily comfortable with the players that are around me or I'm not comfortable with the process that I have in place, you know, perhaps that could be a strategy that you implement. I happen to like this kid's swing a lot. I think he's going to hit. And really, I don't have a great feel on the position, but I think there's really, really good hands to hit. But again, if you're not comfortable with the information that you have or the process that's in place, Perhaps you look at it a little bit differently because you do get that pick again the following year, and you may have a whole different set of decisions in front of you at that point in time. Again, they may just really like the player. I'm leaning towards they like the player. I, I, I'm, I, I, I hear what you're saying, 100%, but I think when you get picked this high, uh, it's tough to turn that down. But wait a minute. This is not a thin draft class. This is a deep draft. There are a lot of big-name players that the Red Sox passed on. Yeah, but if you look at the board and maybe the players left on out there on the board, they don't like as much as this kid at 17. Oh, so yeah, I, They're obviously. seeing something that every other Well, evaluator. yeah, but that's the beauty of the draft. I mean, you could walk in a ballpark and look at this. Two different people could look at the same player and come away with a completely different look. That's the beauty of the game of baseball. Okay, but, but you did this for, for a living. Do you ever remember a first-round pick, your only pick in the first round, and you shocked the likes of Jim Callis and, you know, Carlos Colazzo and Jonathan May? Well, that was, used to be a goal of mine. Is <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you, you remember know, going outside the top 100 for a first first round pick? No, no, I don't. But I'm sure it's happened before within our game. And, you know, ultimately, that's the beauty of the game of baseball because time will show. Yeah. Time will show that, you know, if they were right or if they were wrong. But, you know, again, maybe there's a different strategy that they're putting in place for, for a long-term view of what they're doing. And, and congratulations to Nicholas York. Uh, 